of MP Peter Bone and Labour's Anna McMorrin. And Peter Bone, if I may start with you, you asked the Prime Minister a question in the House, a Prime Minister's questions, which basically said she's failed to deliver what people want. Yeah. I... The test that she used to apply was we would end the free movement of people, we wouldn't pay billions and billions of pounds to the EU each and every year, we'd make our own laws in our own country, judged by our own judges. Clearly, if what we're hearing from the leaks is right, she's failed on those tests and therefore she's not delivering the Brexit. Do you trust the Cabinet, who are in there with her now, to respect what you say and to have that out with her this afternoon? Well, they'll have a discussion, but the majority of the Cabinet are huge Remainers, so they are undoubtedly support the, the Prime Minister. But given that what the Prime Minister is going to say, this deal is the only deal in town, we've heard her say it before, and the alternative is no deal, what would you go for? Well, she's always said uh, 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 a no deal is better than a bad deal. Well, she's presenting a bad deal, so the logic is we should have a no deal, which, of course, isn't a no deal. It's coming out on WTO rules. And that's, of course, what the Act of Parliament says. If there is no agreement, we come out on the 29th of uh, March with uh, a WTO agreement. And I think looking at the parlia parliamentary arithmetic, I think that's probably what's going to happen. Anna McMorrin, lots of questions about Labour's policy on all of this. Um, you want a people's vote. Do you think what we're seeing today makes that more or less likely than that? Well, look, there quite clearly is not a majority in Parliament for whatever this fudge of a situation Theresa May is going to present uh, and get through. What we're hearing is correct. And it certainly wasn't and isn't what people voted for two years ago and is certainly going to make my constituents, businesses in my up and down Wales and the whole of the UK poorer. The Prime Minister made it clear in answer to Peter Bone this is what people voted for because we are leaving the EU. Well, it, it's not what people voted for. They didn't vote for a mess of this. This will lead us not into a clear-cut Brexit is done by the 29th of March. This leads us into future discussions, negotiations for months and perhaps years to come with nothing decided and simply a fudge. But isn't that better than crashing out? Well, this isn't... A, a choice, a binary choice between a bad deal well, or a no deal. The Prime could easily make it one, though, and that, that could easily be what happens when Parliament is faced with... If the Cabinet says yes, it goes to Parliament, it becomes a binary choice, doesn't it? No, it doesn't, because there is a way, and that way is to put that choice back to the people. For the people to say, actually, the we Prime don't Minister want to become that's not going to happen. Poorer. If she's still leading the Tory party after the Cabinet meeting, she said that won't happen. The Prime Minister also said last year that she wasn't going to hold a general election, and then a few weeks later she did. What's the mechanism for that people's vote, though? Well, the mechanism would be that that would be voted on in Parliament, and then the government will come forward with an act to be voted on in Parliament, and we'd need an, an extension then of Article 50 just by uh, a month or two. Peter Bone, your constituents, and I'm sure you've heard it said, may well have the feeling of, let's just get this done. <laughs> yes, yes. And isn't that what the Prime Minister is saying as well? They certainly want it done, but this isn't delivering the Brexit they voted for. I think about 63%, uh, 64% of my constituents voted for, to leave on a, a proper Brexit. And, and we ag both agree that what is, being, what is being proposed is not what uh, people voted for. Well, do you, do you, uh, your version of proper Brexit is very different from many other people's version of a proper Brexit. But... I don't want Peter Bones and the hard Brexiteers version, no, but, but because you're that remain, will make... No, no, that's fair. You are remaining, and that's a fair point. But I think my, my view represents closer to what the 17.4 million voted for. I campaigned up and down the country as part of Go, and, we, and I spoke to so many different people, all telling us that those things that we've talked about are the key principles. And we're just not. To, and they were the prime minister's principles until checkers. But isn't this the prime minister's difficulty? She, there she is. She, she was facing the two of you now. She's going to say, "Look, clearly we have to have a compromise," and that is what is she, she is now offering. Yes, but she could have had a free trade agreement, a comprehensive free trade agreement, something like the EU's done with Canada. And she she had all sort of before checkers, 95 percent of conservative MPs behind her. But checkers changed it all. I don't, I don't understand that decision, but that's what happened. And she lost perhaps 100 Tory MPs in, in that well, decision. Well, the this customs clearly... union is going to be central to this. And if the words customs union appear in this agreement, 
what will your reaction well, be? Well, the, the, the manifesto every Conservative uh, MP stood on in 2017 said we would come out of a customs union, we wouldn't be part of one. Now, I very much doubt if the words customs union will appear, but I bet that's what they're going to keep us in. in. And, isn't that, and this is that's, clearly that's... not a compromise agreement. This. this is not what was agreed two years ago. That's not what people voted for. And, you know, businesses are telling me all the time Public services will be poorer and will really struggle. People up and down the country will really struggle. That is not what we want. We need to be responsible and unite the country, not divide it, which is what she's doing. The country has never been more divided <laughs> than it is now. You have your constituents who may well, as I was saying to Peter, may well be saying, look, let's just get through this hurdle and once we have a Brexit, which was voted for, then we can keep negotiating. What's wrong with that? Well, that's the very problem, is that this is not what people voted for, and it won't be getting it out of the way on the 29th of March. It will just be prolonging the discussions, the debates, but also the divisions up and down this country. That's not what we want at all. We need to bring the country together and make sure that we provide a future and look at that future relationship with the EU, with our partners, our closest neighbours and allies, and that needs to be with the, within the EU. And within the EU? You see, Absolutely. that's the point. Well, we had a referendum <laughs> for this divided country to decide. We decide to leave. You can't be half pregnant. You're either pregnant or not. And that's it, the problem. We have it, to come out. It will Your side it will lost prevent and us. you want another go at no, it. I, if you don't I'll, win, I'll will you, you have what, a third referendum? I've just gone back two years. <laughs> but anyway, Peter exactly. and Anna, it's not we, about we, we, the, we, the we, last time. we've run out of time. But thank you both thank very you. much. Thank you. Thank you. Now, uh, let's see how the agreement's going down in the rest of the EU. Our Brussels